as one of the most innovative engineers of his day, uh, the middle of the, the middle part of the 19th century, uh, Brunel turned his mind to some of the big issues uh, that were facing um, society, uh, British society, and one of them was, of course, the um, uh, emigration to Australia, which. Uh, uh, for which he was designing the massive ship, the Great Eastern. But in, in 1854, uh, events really imposed themselves uh, on Britain uh, when the Crimea, Crimean War broke out, and especially the uh, inability of the British Army to uh, cope with the number of casualties. In the winter of 1854-5, for example, 30 4,000 of the total of 56,000 and 61 percent of the soldiers died in the first six months uh, from disease and um, infected wounds and uh, they were being treated many of them being treated in the, um, the old Turkish barracks at Scutari and this is where Florence Nightingale uh, intervened and, um, and her work managed to uh, overcome some of the problems there but she blamed the permanent secretary for war Sir Benjamin Hawes and uh, Hawes was the brother-in-law of uh, Isambard Kingdom Brunel and she regarded Hawes as incompetent as her worst enemy um, and her devoted service at Scutari reduced the mortality down to 42% uh, uh, still a high figure but nevertheless for the time a significant advance and the scandal of the Scutari hospital and of the general failure of the army medical uh, services if they can even be described as that uh, were widely reported in the British press and on the 16th of February 1855 uh, the government was forced to take action or was, was required to take action uh, and uh, because of these press reports and Hawes contacted his brother-in-law Brunel and he wanted Brunel to design some sort of hospital that could be put up in the region and uh, Brunel replied that same day that his time and he said his time and best exertions would be without any limitations and entirely at the service of the government and he immediately put aside his work on the Great Eastern uh, and he concentrated on the hospital and design and uh, by the early part of the following month, so just within a couple of weeks, he was able to present a plan to the War Office um, and he noted that um, it is most gratifying to be able to state that from everybody I've received the most zealous and cordial assistance and found it sufficient to mention the objects of my inquiries to obtain immediately every assistance I could possibly uh, require. So he was able to uh, produce his plans they were able to give him all the information that he needed and what he was planning was um, uh, buildings and within a few prototype a few days he had a prototype of his suggested uh, hospital ward erected on land at Paddington some of the spare land at Paddington station and he drawn up a very specific stipulation for his buildings um, and these would be prefabricated and he wanted them to be capable of standing on any ground that was available and to be extended to make um, so all the base units had to basic units had to be identical and they had to be self-contained they had to be portable and easily constructed so his concept was a series of identical self-contained standard wards plus the stores and general purpose buildings all that had to happen was that the ground had to be leveled so that you walked at the same height throughout the whole complex and each unit was capable of being joined onto the next so the final shape of the hospital could be just adapted to whatever uh, uh, walls uh, whatever land was available and the wards were to be painted pre-painted with lime wash with a bit of tint in it just to reduce the glare and uh, each standard unit was to be two wards uh, comprised two wards which would each contain 26 patients so a standard unit would take 52 patients they'd be wide and high and he was very keen about having air circulating to all beds no crowding so this was the absolute antithesis of what was going on in Scutari 
they would contain each basic unit would contain uh, uh, their own bathrooms uh, rooms for the nurses flushing water closets and drainage far in advance of most housing then uh, permanent housing then in Britain um, and also a large fan to force air into the ward and the idea was that uh, fresh air would be brought in and it would help to remove um, bad air which was still many still believe was the cause of infection uh, but it would encourage um, smells to as it were to be blown out of the ward the idea was that every patient would have about a thousand cubic feet of air space uh, devoted to them there would be windows uh, with shutters along the eaves to, uh, to allow for ventilation and light but the shutters themselves would have to be hinged so there'd be no direct sunlight so that it wouldn't be uh, burning light down onto the patients but indirect light well lit inside but indirectly and also he even designed a special a portable invalid bath and the whole idea was the wards were not to be crowded uh, and in fact the invalid baths were designed to be placed between beds temporarily for the patients to receive a bath uh, and um, the bedding was to include a lower canvas sheet with very wide hems so that um, poles could be inserted into the hems either side of the patient uh, and it, the, the lower sheet then became canvas sheet then became a stretcher and you could then lift uh, two men could then lift the stretcher and place gradually immerse the patient in the bath alongside the bed very gently indeed uh, so he was really innovative, innovative in his designs uh, also he decided that lighting at night should be candles because he felt these were adequate and also safe everybody knew at that time everybody was very familiar with an open flame uh, but what he would do is is contain the candles in special lanterns well they were special in as much as they were railway lanterns so he was just adapting designs that he'd already done for the Great Western Railway uh, and these would then be used in these wards and also every ward had a basic sort of uh, fire engine or a hose with with a water supply in case fire should occur if the hospital was going to last for uh, a full year then he uh, allowed for that because all of the walls were designed to take uh, internal lining in other words he, he, he designed it with uh, cavity wall insulation which again a big innovation for the time when you had single uh, brick or stone built structures uh, were the norm the kitchens were to be separate uh, they were iron frame building uh, completely separate from the wooden built hospital but they would um, be capable of providing all the meals for the patients and staff for of about 500 so that's probably something in the region of about uh, 300 and what would that be 5204 312 patients uh, plus the staff uh, making up to 500 and also there was to be a wash house which was also to be iron framed because that would be heated um, and and it would include a drying room uh, to dry off uh, washing water pumps a reservoir tank and a water main piping system all the all the the, the basic unit had a standard water uh, distribution system within it and a standard drainage system within it and all the pipes could be uh, joined together without um, soldering or cement in other words they were push fit completely revolutionary for the time um, the that's the, the the pipes that were distributing the water then the drainage system the pipes were actually wooden and uh, they could so they were very easily repaired with basic materials should there be a problem and also the the, the basic design for the walls could be adapted to provide dormitories for officers and staff he produced the plans very quickly for mass production and he designed them in such a way that there was virtually no waste of material so you weren't cutting out strange fancy designs which then had to be was producing a lot of waste wood they were uh, efficient for construction and erection they were cheapest, the cheapest and lighting, lightest buildings, that is illuminated buildings, ever made um, for the area that they covered. 
um, and each constructional unit was designed uh, when it was packed down before it was assembled each ward uh, part of each ward could be carried by two men so a number of these units went together to make the standard uh, double ward unit and um, before uh, doing any receiving any um, orders from the government Brunel himself ordered enough parts to make a thousand bed hospital on his own initiative and um, the idea was is that they were to be very well uh, 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 ventilated. Uh, the idea to the smells were regarded as the problem, but without realising it, they were actually doing the right thing because they were drastically reducing airborne infection, and also it meant that every ward could be isolated from the next uh, by an open corridor, which through which air was allowed to pass. Fresh air would just blew straight through. And this became a first line of defence for cross infection between wards. And Brunel actually noted in his uh, voluminous instructions for making and erecting these uh, wards, he said, I, if I have a monomania, it is a belief in the effic efficacy of sweet air for invalids. And uh, so the idea was is that these 26 bed, each of these 26 bed wards would branch off from a central corridor at right angles but of course as any of these things uh, you know uh, any aficionados of lego or <laughs> any of those sort of kids construction um, toys you can just they can just grow and grow in all directions they're well drained well ventilated sewers were run to be run outside the wards not to a central drain under the corridor which was the usual design uh, at that time the uh, the wards as they were being built uh, the included as I say the water closets and lavatories and um, lavatory paper was supplied the, the idea this was all to be packed up into these units which then assembled and include all the supplies with them including lavatory paper plus handbills pre-pasted onto the walls of the lavatories informing the ordinary sh soldiers how to use them and exhorting them to do so so clearly not uh, something which people normally uh, dealt with you know chopped up newspapers or something like that instead so Brunel was really thinking ahead uh, standard units fixed together on a standard pattern in other words it was a flat pack hospital Brunel would have loved IKEA he really would that would have been he would have been one of their chief designers but the design was also flexible and most important of all with plans on how to put together every unit contained within that unit it meant it could be assembled by an unskilled workforce as long as one of them could read then they could follow the very straightforward simple instructions with diagrams on how to erect the ward it's like um, stepping back uh, or stepping into uh, receiving your flat pack cupboard and working your way through the IKEA instructions to put the thing together. That's exactly how Brunel envisaged these wards would be erected. And um, the government appointed Dr. Parks um, as chief medical superintendent, and he decided to build um, southeast um, of the, um, the barracks at Scutari, which Florence Nightingale was administering, at a place called um, Renkioi. Both Scutari and Renkio are now part of Istanbul, been taken over by this, they're just swamped by the city. But Renkio then, uh, well, I suppose now as well, was a raised location, so there was a constant breeze, and the whole idea was to keep down the temperature in the wards. And remember, he's designing these for use for going out in the spring and being used over the summer of 1855. So they'd be well ventilated, but they'd not be cold at night. And as I said earlier, uh, they, if they were to be used for longer than the summer, then they could be insulated. Um, Parks described the site in a report to the Secretary of State for War, and he passed it on, Hawes passed it on to um, Brunel, who approved and thought, yes, that sounds good, but frankly, any flat piece of land will do, but that sounds like an ideal location. Uh, and he sent one of his assistants, um, one of his many assistants, Brunton, he would be in charge of the hospital assembly, actually in Turkey. 
so uh, by mid April uh, having made the move in mid February two months later Hawes uh, was um, had been <laughs> instructed by his brother-in-law to provide shipping space for about 1800 tons because he worked he worked it out of course Brunel ever the diligent um, uh, absolutely extraordinary uh, calculating machine that he was estimated that he estimated that he needed about one and three quarter tons of shipping capacity per bed and on the 2nd of April he wrote to Brunton about what he would um, face or part of his instructions for Brunton going out in uh, to Turkey so he said to him all plans will be sent in duplicate well that's for Brunton himself um, they will be sent on the steamer Hawk or the steamer Gertrude in fact they were sent on both I shall send a derrick um, that's uh, for like a, a crane and most of the tools and as each vessel sails you shall hear by post what is in her one of the problems had been um, in the Crimea is that ships were arriving the army didn't have a clue what was in them uh, anyway he continues to Brunton you are most fortunate in having exactly the man in Dr Parks that I should have selected and an enthusiastic clever agreeable man devoted to the object understanding the plans and works and quite disposed to attach as much importance to the perfection of the building and all those parts I deem most important as to mere doctoring the son of the contractor goes with the head foreman ten carpenters the foreman of the WC makers and two men who worked on the iron houses and can lay pipes. I'm sending a small forge and two carpenters benches, but you will need assistant carpenters and laborers, 50 to 60 in all. I shall have sent you excellent assistance. Try and succeed. Do not let anything induce you to alter the general system and arrangement that I have laid down. This was really important instruction because once it got once they got to Turkey, the army tended to make a complete hash of anything that was being sent out there it was a disgraceful situation me so while all this was going on um, IKB was organizing its all its manufacture packing and dispatch and the first consignment was shipped at the end of April and it got to Istanbul on the 7th of May and altogether um, he used space on 23 different steamers and sailing ships and altogether they carried 11,500 tons of materials and stores from April through to the beginning of December 1855 and everything uh, was already pre-planned in Brunel's mind laid out in the instructions that he sent to, to Brunton or with Brunton as well he, he, this was the correct method and order of construction do this first then do this so obviously the water supplies and the drains went in first then the wards were kept uh, packed until they were required not built and then left to go um, derelict but built as required as the army medical services became capable of supplying and treating patients and frankly the problem was um, the full this hospital was never exploited to its full extent because the army medical services were never capable of organizing themselves sufficiently to make use of it even though it was desperately needed um, for the treatment of wounded soldiers each ship transporting the materials can carried a complete self-contained wards and again Brunel said so that by no accident mistake or confusion short of the loss of several of the ships can there fail to be a certain amount of hospital accommodation provided with every comfort and essential so in other words whatever befell the ships each one has got a complete self-contained unit like a mini hospital and it was an absolute triumph of Brunel's logical planning and organization and um, he really he really excelled in this sort of work and really demonstrated how concerned and keen he was to provide uh, the best facilities for the those wounded um, in the Crimean War he, he did write directly to Dr Parks and he said all the vessels with the entire hospital will I believe have left England before the end of next week that is before the 21st of May finding finding that none of the ordnance stores were likely to be ready in other words that's from the army and indeed that no positive time could be ascertained for their being ready I obtained yesterday 
uh, authority yesterday to purchase one third of the required quantity of bedding and some of the other similar stores and they are now going aboard with the buildings. In other words, the army hadn't been even able to provide bedding. I've added 20 shower baths, one for each ward, and six vapor baths. You'll be amazed to find also certain boxes of paper for the water closets. I find that at a cost of a few shillings per day, an ample supply could be furnished, and the mechanical success of the water closets will be much influenced by this. I hope you will succeed in getting it used and not abused. In order to assist in this important object, I sent out some printed notice or handbills to be stuck up, if you see no objection, in the closet room opposite each closet, exhorting the men to use the apparatus properly and telling them how to do so. In fact, these notices eventually were pre-pasted onto the, <laughs> onto the uh, lavatory walls. The buildings will be very quickly after you, after you've arrived there. I almost fear you cannot have satisfied yourself about the site by the time they arrive. If you depend on government officers, and if they all resemble those at home, with one or two exceptions, your patience will be well tried. And in fact, that's exactly what Parks faced. He had to basically go it alone. He designed, built and delivered on ship an entire portable hospital, a completely unique structure in 12 weeks. Uh, the um, and the Army Commissariat in London, uh, the, its representative Major O'Brien, have been completely unable to assemble even the moderate stores required to stock it. So that's why Brunel just ignored the Army's incompetence and frankly just ordered everything he needed through his own office staff. His, his headquarters um, in London just acted as the headquarters for this. Everything, uh, well, the first batch of stuff arrived in Renkioi on the 21st of May. Uh, and construction began. It took a bit longer than expected because the army couldn't release any labour, couldn't find any labour, and the army uh, regarded the locals as completely untrustworthy, that they would steal anything of any value because um, certainly in that part of Turkey the sort of people who would act as labourers were impoverished and desperate for any anything they could get. Um, so Brunton had to rely on the small gang of men that had come with him from, from um, Britain but then he did begin to recruit locally, uh, relied, completely reliable, um, honest individuals, and they began to pitch into the work as well. By June 1855, the hospital was ready, the first part of the hospital was ready, and they had 300 beds completely fitted out, staff, everything, just waiting for patients. Parks described it as 34 uh, wards were going to be erected down the length of the peninsula at Renkioi, either side of a central corridor which was a covered way open at the sides 22 foot wide the whole thing ran east to west the main corridor almost a third of a mile long uh, and the wall set at right angles to this with two shorter covered ways um, with lines of wards parallel and either side of the main corridor um, and in fact the whole thing was uh, expanding and expanding and expanding and could have gone on growing and growing uh, when peace was declared and it was really um, not needed for very much longer. They found excellent freshwater springs and Brunton was able to establish a big reservoir and um, it meant they had a constant supply of fresh water for baths, lavatories, um, cisterns and the runoff, the, the constant runoff, um, was, was put down through the sewers so they were flushed clean continuously 24 hours a day. And the drainage pipe was carried about a mile out into the Dardanelles. Uh, they had a couple of laundries and these used 4,000 gallons of boiling water per day. And again, the waste from the laundries was used to flush the sewers. And they built the uh, houses for medical and other officers were located just beyond the laundries. But again, of this um, flat pack design. Uh, by the Christmas of 1855, there were a thousand beds ready, and eventually the hospital treated 1,300 patients. And the mortality rate, which under Florence Nightingale and Scutari was 42%, and gradually fell throughout 1855, fell further. From the beginning at Renkioi was 4%. Absolutely extraordinary, because they had the facilities there. Uh, and unlike its Scutari barracks where you had to make do with an old building, this was made for the fit for purpose. So each ward was about 100 foot long by about 40 foot, 44 foot wide. The walls were of tin on a wooden frame and then felt roofs on top. 
and um, obviously connected by the corridor with, and storehouses with tiled roofs uh, and corrugated iron kitchens with boilers all the rest of it um, Florence Nightingale when she did get to see it um, she thought she did a rather grudgingly she wasn't one to uh, bestow praise very easily um, but she did approve the 22 ward building which was very good of her but she did eventually refer to Renkioi as those magnificent huts well huts a bit of, of a pejorative term frankly this was that magnificent hospital she was really miffed though that the nurses at Renkioi were not under her control she believed she should be in charge of everything that happened but that wasn't to be the case uh, Parks the doctor there the chief medical officer there he said nothing could exceed the simplicity of the whole arrangement it was a repetition of similar parts throughout and experience enables me to say that nothing could be better adapted for a hospital than this system of isolated buildings between every one of which was a large body of moving air rendering ventilation easy and communication of disease from ward to ward impossible the introduction of the covered way connecting the various houses that's what he was calling the wards was a happy idea in the summer this corridor was left quite open at the sides and formed a cool walk for the convalescents while in winter we boarded up its north side so that in the coldest blast of the northern wind the men were protected and were able to leave their wards and to take exercise for the construction of this hospital every necessary part was sent out by mr brunel it was admirably adapted for men recovering from illness and although it was just a wooden structure and built very designed built very quickly just in a few weeks it was in operation from october uh, 1855 until june 1856 um, and of the recorded deaths of which there was about 50 22 died from typhus 14 from dysentery 18 from pulmonary 8 from pulmonary tuberculosis and six from a variety of other causes it was never more than half full the army and the government medical administration was completely incapable of use utilizing it to the full extent that that uh, brunel wished and um, brunel never really um, uh, forgot about his hospital of course uh, he never never forgot and he actually during the summer he devised working arrangements for increasing each ward's capacity by 50 percent just in case there was a sudden influx of patients and um i suspect parks probably received this as if to say well you know i'm the doctor i know what i'm doing <laughs> and you're an engineer but you know you're not going to stop brunel from from constantly dreaming up new solutions to existing problems but he provided a large temporary hospital as required by the government because the government and its and its army was completely incapable of fulfilling the task the total cost 22,000 um, pounds and um, contracts were agreed for um, extending the hospital further but uh, that was cancelled because the Crimea war thank goodness ended in May 1856 and Brunel as as peace was being declared uh, Brunel wrote to Brunson his assistant there who'd stayed with the hospital in in um, in Turkey uh, he, and he said to him uh, I don't want the thing to be flung into a ditch when done with but should prefer a useful end that each part should be made the most of and methodically and profitably disposed of everybody here expresses themselves highly satisfied with everybody there and what we have done I should wish to show that it was no spirit but just a sober exercise of common sense and Parks actually uh, wrote uh, recorded later he said all the stores which were likely to be used or to sell well in England were sent home and everything else was sold on the ground Major Chads with 20 soldiers and Mr Brunton remained behind to superintend the sale of the buildings which took place on September the 20th and some example sections were returned to Britain and of course at the back of your mind you've got to wonder if there's an old garden shed or other structure somewhere in the outskirts of Istanbul which date back to 1854 and a part of 1855 rather and a part of Brunel's uh, flat pack hospital uh, he provided after the end of the Crimean War he provided copies of all the plans and the instructions on how to build it to the war office 
and they in turn, the War Office, uh, supplied a copy of the plans uh, to the, the the Union Army in the United States, or what became the United States, uh, during the Civil War, well, it was the United States, and uh, during the Civil War, and the Union Army used it for their own temporary hospitals. And uh, the whole scheme was eventually adopted by the German Imperial Army, and it was used in the Franco-German German War of 1871. So he, Brunel was absolutely extraordinary. He designed, built, organized, transported and constructed a hospital in six months, which not only uh, achieved its initial objective, but also radically improved the lot of wounded soldiers and many, many men, unfortunately not as many as there should have been, owed their lives uh, to Brunel's foresight, understanding and engineering brilliance, design uh, brilliance. And it became the model for future temporary military hospitals. And um, aspects uh, were eventually incorporated into a certain steel prefabricated hut which was designed in 1916 by a major Peter Nissen, the Nissen hut of which uh, the British Army and many others are very familiar. Brunel had created the first flat pack buildings and after that the world followed on behind and should be eternally grateful for his invention and imagination in solving a radical problem quickly and efficiently. Just another example of Brunel's brilliance. Well I hope you've enjoyed this, this short introduction to Brunel's um, flat pack hospital. Um, if you have then uh, please give this uh, video a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any comments please do post them.